Well, Merry Christmas, and welcome back to Redeemed by Grace Fellowship as we conclude our study that we've been doing through this Christmas time, uh, a Christmas of old, seeing Jesus through the Old Testament. Today will be our final lesson in that. We've spent a lot of time going through some things, and so we will actually go back and look at some of that on the way to looking at the fulfillment of those studies that we've been looking at, and that is the coming of Jesus Christ. So uh, that said, I want to first of all have you, let me get this back out of the screen. There we go. I want Make sure that you go down below and that you do indeed hit the uh, subscribe button first of all so that you will always uh, have access to the content that we do uh, put out there. And make sure that you hit that notification bell so you know when we are dropping a new lesson and things along that nature. And more importantly, hit that share button. Share this out as a way for us to make sure that the world hears the gospel and the truth of Jesus Christ in, in a mighty way. To make sure you just share that out so that people can hear that particular message. So, uh, we'll t going to be looking at a special lesson today and entitled a special Christmas gift. And so we're going to take a look at that. We are going to go to the New Testament. Uh, I know this uh, series has about been about the Old Testament, but we're going to look at the fulfillment of everything that we've looked at in the previous nine lessons. That all point to this moment in Luke chapter 2. Um, we're going to be looking at the first 20 verses of that. And so we're actually going to use a Bible gateway once again to read the lesson for us, to read those uh, 20 uh, verses of chapter 2 of Luke right off the bat. So we will hear it read. And again, if you have a copy of your own copy of God's Word, hey, open up to chapter 2 of Luke and you'll follow along right with us there. And if not, if you want to pause this and download uh, one of those apps. There's three of them I've been recommending. Gateway uh, Bible is one. That's the one we're going to uh, use an audio recording from today. Uh, Blue Letter Bibles, another that is fantastic. And the Gideons International also has one on, on their website that you can download for free. All of those are fantastic. They give you study tools. They provide audio, different translations that you can look at uh, and compare. And all that kind of good stuff. So make sure that you get that. So if you need to pause this and do that, that's great. If not, we're going to go ahead and plug forward. I'm going to get off the screen here, go full screen so that you can see the text a little bit better as we head into that. And uh, there we go. And I'm going to hit play. So the next voice you will hear will be the recording. So here we go. Chapter 2. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. All right. All right. Well, you know, if someone's birth was predicted thousands of years ahead of time and then announced by a heavenly host on the night of his arrival, would you consider that event extremely significant in human history? Of course you would. Yet for too many people, way too many people, Christmas is simply a time for festive parties, decorated trees, wrapped presents. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with these expressions unless they replace the real significance of their celebration. And the truth is that Christmas is more than an event. It's a promised, it's a promise offered to mankind. And it originated long before that first Christmas night. In fact, God planned this entire event before the foundation of the world. He foreknew the coming child and all the details of his birth, life, and death. And the first of a long line of promises regarding this child came immediately after Adam and Eve sinned. We saw that in Genesis chapter 3. And the Lord told them that the seed of the woman would one day bruise the head of the serpent, though it took thousands of years for this word to be fulfilled, the seed finally entered the world right on schedule. Now, prophecies about this long-awaited child are found throughout the Old Testament, and we have taken the time to take a look at just a handful of those, nine in fact, over the last few months. So make sure that if you haven't seen those, that you do go back and watch those videos as well so that you'll understand the context of some of what we're talking about. And and so uh, these prophecies about this long way to child, they're, they're found throughout the Old Testament. And with each one, we gain a greater understanding of who he is and what God has promised us. And when the Lord picked Abraham to become the father of the chosen nation, he promised that in him all the families of the earth would be blessed. And then as Abraham's descendants multiplied, the Lord identified the tribe of Judah as the line through which the, his promised one would come. And eventually he revealed that to David, who would be the ancestor of Israel's coming king. And we've looked at that as well. And the prophet Isaiah further uh, gives details when he wrote, Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Since his name means God, God is with us, it is filled with the promise of his presence. And although the Lord has always been with us and always with his people, he now uh, he was now planning to dwell with them in a very unique way. The eternal God of the universe was going to enter the human race, race through a, a physical birth to live among his people as a man while never ceasing to be God. Emmanuel, God with us, would be physically present on earth, walking among his people, revealing the Father to them, teaching precious truths, showing them how to live, and heal, healing the sick. On, a, on that dark Christmas night, these Old Testament promises 
of his coming were finally fulfilled. But it wasn't the end. When and the Son of God came into the world, he, he brought more promises to mankind. And his name even carried a promise. Because if you remember when Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant, an angel appeared to him in a dream saying, The child who was, has been conceived in her is the, uh, is the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people among their sins. And the name Jesus is English for the English form of the word Yeshua, which means Jehovah is salvation. And that's exactly what the Son of God is, the Savior who came to rescue sinful humanity. And when Jesus became an adult and began his ministry, John the Baptist would identify him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this was Jesus' purpose for coming to earth, to die as a sacrificial lamb, and therefore thereby uh, reconciling us to God. Even the place of his arrival was uh, appropriate. I mean, the Lamb of God was born in a stable. His birth announcement was given to, to lowly shepherds. And throughout his ministry, Jesus made some of the uh, some very big promises. All all who received him would be given the right to become children of God. In other words, believers are no longer uh, God's enemies, but instead actually belong to his family. Think about that for a minute. Jesus also promised to, to answer the prayers of his followers when they asked in his name and in according to his will. And he, and he said to those who were intimately united with him that they would have fruitful lives. On one occasion, Jesus called himself the bread of life, saying that anyone who believes in him would Never hunger or thirst again. Well, obviously, he, he wasn't referring to physical food and drink, but to his ability to satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts. Friends, every year, countless people hope that the, the trimmings and the celebrations of Christmas will meet their emotional, relational, and physical needs. They think that if they could simply choose the right gifts, have the right the house decorated just so, and experience that harmonious family gathering, maybe it would be, maybe it would fill that empty place in their hearts. But it never completely does because they've missed Jesus. He's the only one who can truly satisfy a hungry soul. But how can someone born thousands of years ago uh, still keep such a promise? Well, although Jesus physically left this earth after his death and resurrection, he also promised not to leave his disciples as orphans or us. And he, he, he would ask the Father to send his Holy Spirit to live in them forever. And that is still his promise to every believer today. Jesus Christ isn't only our Savior. He's our constant companion, our comforter, and guide who will never leave or forsake us. <coughs> Excuse me. Christ's promises, friends, doesn't apply to just life. He also give hope and death. Now, Christmas can be especially difficult when you've lost a loved one. The activities uh, which once brought joy and now bring, bring a reminder of pain and loss when that has happened. But Christ promises us that death isn't the end. I mean, when Martha's brother Lazarus died, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And that's why Christ came that first Christmas night, to overcome sin and death. 
And now everyone who believes in him has the promise of both eternal life and a resurrection body that will never again be subject to sin and death. Can you even imagine that, my friends? Never being subject again to sin and death. That's incredible. Can you imagine the great reunion we'll have when Jesus finally returns exactly as he promised? He is coming back. That just at the right moment, he will gather us all together and to take us home to a place that he's prepared for us. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more tears, no more pain. When at last, all the promises of scripture are fulfilled. Well, friends, this Christmas, when you gather around the tree, stop for a moment and worship the one who came as a baby and died as a man to give you everlasting life. When you see the presence, think of the gift of his salvation. And remember that Christmas is a personal promise to you, a promise of forgiveness, a promise of salvation, and a promise of eternal life. And if you can trust Christ to save you, surely you can believe every other promise that he's made. For as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Well, friends, because he has called us and saved us to life, he has sent us out into this world. And he has sent us out to tell and testify to the truth of Christ Jesus, to tell them the good news of what happened this Christmas morning that we celebrate. And so I, 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 I challenge each of you to, to do that, to share the truth of Jesus Christ. Share it with your in your family gatherings. Share it to your friends and neighbors. Share it in your local community through your local church. Share it here at Redeemed by Grace by sharing this video out uh, among the nations that they might hear the truth of Christ by sharing the gospel even with yourself important for us to do that. I am going to ask you to, again, please follow Redeemed by Grace Fellowship, and you can follow us on all our platforms. Especially, I want, again, want you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and to share this video out. Share us right here on YouTube where all our video content will be stored. It'll also be stored over on Rumble in case there's ever a censorship issue. And you will always, when you're expecting a lesson, be able to find it at one place or the other. So make sure that you uh, do uh, uh, go out and follow us on those as well. But you will also find different content that we do put out there on each of these platforms. Uh, you'll find a, uh, content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. True Social, LinkedIn, and we've even just started putting a few things out on Pinterest. And there's many others that we'd like to be able to tap into as well. But make sure that you do that. If you have any questions about any of those, you see our contact email there, rbgf22 at yahoo.com. Please shoot over any questions or comments that you might have in regard to that. Now, I'd kind of like to like to know what you guys would like to study next in 2023, the new year. And so we've got a few suggestions, but we've got like to hear uh, more. So if you would have an idea of what you would like to study, uh, shoot that email over rbgf22 at yahoo.com. And we'll be glad to take a look at some of that the suggestions that you have. Uh, your suggestions in one of our studies already begetted another study. 
uh, which I'll mention here in a minute. But go ahead and uh, uh, send that over. Email us any of your prayer requests or praises that you have. We surely like to be praying with you, but also to celebrate the things that God's doing in your life. So please, please uh, email us those as well. And then uh, uh, pray about being part of our team. If, if God is talking to you about uh, joining Redeemed by Grace Fellowship as far as leadership is concerned, uh, whether you're a person that can deal with graphics and the technology issues or music or deal with uh, teaching, uh, whether it's women, children, uh, whatever it might be, uh, we would like to talk to you. So definitely um, shoot us an email as well, and we'll have some discussions and pray together and, and take a look at how you could help uh, uh, lead this gospel ministry. And so, Another reason to hit us on that email, rbgf22 at yahoo.com, is if you're in need of assistance with any of the following things on the screen. Again, Redeemed by Grace Fellowship is not meant to be a replacement or a substitute for a local church. It's simply meant for a way that Christians can gather to mature in our faith, to grow, to learn more about what it is that we need to know from the scriptures. So that's what that is about. But you are to be a part of a local church. That's what Christ wanted. That's what he designed. Uh, and, and if you go and look at a study called uh, A Walk Through the Book of Acts that we have out there, you'll see that uncovered in, in a mighty way uh, as you go through that. But yes, you need to be part of a local church and not, not just for your own benefit, but for the benefit of others that you might help equip the saints. And so, again, uh, if you are having trouble and need assistance with finding a local church or what to even look for as far as criteria, a biblical criteria in a local church, shoot us an email. We'd be glad to, to get you that information and then maybe give you a, a, a list of some churches you might want to go check out in your local area and see if they do match that and pray over it, of course, and, but to see if that's where God's leading you to go. Um, if you're having need assistance with conquering substance abuse, definitely shoot us an email. Uh, my co-founder uh, with this is a specialist in this area and has been, in fact, he uh, came out of substance abuse himself and God brought him out of it, but it, uh, he has a, a unique opportunities to get you assistance and uh, and uh, assistance in a mighty way, uh, and even help with arranging financing to to get you that help. So uh, again, uh, definitely uh, shoot us an email. We'll be glad to talk to you about that privately as well. Uh, if you have questions about the faith, uh, about your faith, or, or about anything to do with theology, please shoot us those questions. We'll be glad to answer those as well. If you have questions about salvation, what is this salvation? What is it? Why do I need Jesus Christ? What does this really have to do? Please shoot those over. We'll be glad to have those discussions with you as well. And then uh, go back and check out all our uh, 2022 studies that are out there. Uh, again, one of them I mentioned was a walk through the book of Acts. Uh, that one's out there where we go uh, all the way through, almost verse by verse, all the way through the book of Acts uh, over several uh, weeks. And, and you can uh, follow that along. And, and uh, yeah, you, if you have questions about it, you could still shoot us an email. Just let us know what study you're on and what question that you have. And we'll be glad to answer them as well. Uh, and then the, uh, from that study in the book of Acts, we had somebody ask one time, hey, do you have some kind of course on the uh, fundamentals of the faith? What does it mean to be a Christian? And sure enough, boom, there it is. Uh, there's a course uh, that's written by John MacArthur um, that we kind of went through and had discussions. And yes, you can follow all 13 lessons there uh, as well or are, are, are out there from this year. 
And, of course, this series that we're just finishing right here today, A uh, Christmas of Old, Seeing Jesus Through the Old Testament. If you haven't had a chance to, to go through any of that, feel free to do that, and we will get started. And, again, we're looking to figure out what it is we're going to do in 2023. And so if, again, you have a suggestion, something that you would like to see, um, fire that over on the email. Again, that's rbgf. 22 at yahoo.com and we'll be glad to look at it. but make sure that you do get subscribed to the youtube channel so that you always get these videos that you don't miss out on any of the video uh, content is uh, on any of those things so make sure that you check those studies out if you haven't already and make sure you share them out well friends uh want to wish you a very very merry christmas from Redeemed by Grace Fellowship, I know that we love you and that we uh, will continue to uh, pray for you, to continue to serve you, and to serve our Lord in any way that he directs. And so uh, well, we, we hope and pray that you do have a blessed Christmas as you celebrate the Savior um, as well. Uh, with your families, with your friends, uh, in your communities, wherever it is. Uh, you know, you hear people say, well, Jesus is the reason for the season. Well, there's a lot of truth to that statement, but there's more to it than what those words even say. And when we stop and look at God's word, we understand that uh, and, and, and really understand that in a mighty way. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. And then we're going to get out of here. This again is the last study. We'll catch you again in, in the new year as we begin our next study. So you still got time to get that email over. So, uh, but in the meantime, you will see some of our uh, uh, stuff appearing on the other platforms. YouTube might get a little bit of quiet until I send out an introduction on our first study. But, uh, 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 you can feel free to contact us at any time while you're doing that. But friends, uh, uh, let's pray, and then we'll get out of here. Almighty God, we're just so thankful that we could come together. Lord, what what a blessing you have given us since we began this mission together back in April of 2020, and we uh, 2022. And Lord, we look so forward to what you're going to bring us in the new year. And so, Lord, we just lay uh, Redeemed by Grace Fellowship at your feet, ask you to uh, continue to bless it, to, to bring forth leaders, to bring forth uh, followers that just want to grow in Christ and, take, and help take the message of the gospel across the world. Uh, and, Lord, I pray that each of our members of the fellowship would be deeply enriched within the local church, that they would be uh, doing your will according to your purpose within their local community, within their state, their nation, and across the world. And I just thank you for that. Lord, I just pray for them as they gather with their families, that uh, as we're opening presents and turning uh, on the trees and feasting and all those things that go with the Christmas season, Lord, may it all be a reflection on you. May we stop and remember what you have done. And may we never forget the Christmas of old. And we thank you and we praise you for bringing us Jesus Christ. And bringing salvation through him. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen and amen and amen. And friends, again. You have a Merry Christmas, and God bless, and we will see you in the new year.